e shalua makiam wa akwath kal halal yahawa bahasam yahawsai bahasam rahakwadash the bow honor to the apostles and elders at great millstone the man that taught me the 100% truth according to the holy scriptures and shalom to the israelite foreigners who are scattered amongst the heathen in these last days and in these last days you so-called negroes you so-called latinos and you so-called native americans you make up the 12 tribes of the nation of israel yahawa means he exists he to be in the ancient paleo hebrew who the world through ignorance calls ahaya chihova Yahweh or God. Yahweh Shai, who the world through ignorance calls Jesus Christ, Cheshua or Yahuwah. Yahweh Shai means he saves or he delivers. And through Yahweh Shai, the elect of the nation of Israel are going to obtain victory over this wicked satanic kingdom known as the kingdom of the Edomites. And the Edomites today are you so-called white people. Okay, mainly the international elites. Okay, the international bankers who are ruling this world in wickedness pursuant to the book of Job 9 and 24. And this a brief lesson is a request of how to utilize the blue letter Bible. Okay, this was a request a while back from a sincere sister. And uh, very others, uh, various uh, other uh, sincere brothers who were inquiring, you know, or requesting of uh, how to utilize, utilize or use the tool via the unicorn, which is, you know, prophecy pursuant to the book of Psalms, the 19th chapter. Yahweh Shemiel Shai also said in Daniel. 12 and 4 that knowledge shall be increased and part of the uh, knowledge that's increasing in these last days is the understanding of the different uh, words parables you know and meanings you know various metaphors and similes that Yahweh Bashmiah Shai has given to his men and a tool that we use again is called the blue letter bible but before I even uh, touch into how to utilize the blue letter Bible, I want to go into the book of Daniel 12 and 4. It's the book of Daniel 12 and 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Right, That book is speaking about the Holy Scriptures, both the law and the testimony, even to the time of the end. Right, What is the end? The end that's speaking about Esau's kingdom. Okay, the time of the end that's speaking about Esau's kingdom. Which that word, the end of the world. Okay, that word world in the Greek, one of their meanings is a uh, eon. That eon means an age. But when you actually study the scriptures, the end of the world started... 2,000 years ago, this is Hebrews 1, we'll start at 1, Hebrews 1 and 1, it says, God, which is a title, which is Yahweh, who at sundry times and, and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers, by the prophets hath in these last days, you see that? Now remember the book of Hebrews was written around 2,000 years ago. So the last day started during the time of Yahweh Shai and the apostles when you had the Edomites ruling, okay, or uh, during what? During that Roman Empire era, that's when the last days started. But now, speaking about the last seconds of the last days, well, it's uh, this year, the year 2022, the year of amplification. Yahweh Bashmiel Shai, he's uh, uh, rising up, 
okay, uh, both frequencies on the left, the left side and the right hand side, both uh, good and evil. It says Hebrews 1 and 2 hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made all the worlds, or he made the worlds, right? That's plural. And those worlds, hey, that's speaking about the world of Israel, the world of uh, Esau, Edom, the world of, uh, of Moab, Ammon, and all the worlds given to Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai is the word. So when you go back into the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, But thou, o Daniel, shut up the words. And seal the book, even to the time of the end. Now we got the understanding that the time of the end started around 2,000 years ago. But the real end is what? The end of Esau's kingdom. The second Ezra 69. And it reads, For Esau is the end of the world. That word world, again, is eon, which means an age. And... Yahweh Shmuel Shai has already measured the times of how this uh, devil is going out too far. There's an exact year, an exact month, an exact you know minute and second where this devil is going too far. For Esau, it's the end of the world, and Jacob, who's Jacob, or Jacob, translates to the Hebrew name. Yashar Allah, he prince of power, which translates to the English Israel. So you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans are symbolic to Jacob. That's our forefather. It's the beginning of what? The beginning of the kingdom of it that followeth. So Esau is the end of the world. The end of this uh, wicked rulership. So back to Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. But thou, o Daniel, shut up the words. And seal the book. Now that book, again, is the Holy Scriptures. That's the book of Revelation, chapter 5 and verse 5. And it reads, And one of the elders said unto me, I'll start at 4, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 4. Let's get straight to the point. Let's start at 3. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, Neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Yeah, meaning there was a time when, you know, the uh, the seals or the seven seals, which no, number seven is symbolic to a complete number of books. And those books are in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis all the way to Revelation. There was a time when, you know, you had, a, you know, the heathens, even the heathens, who try to, uh, you know, discover the secrets of the scriptures, you know, the mysteries and the parables of the Heavenly Father and His Son. But what? But it says, verse 2, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book? Yeah, so who, who's that honorable spirit that has the uh, power or the ability to open the book, meaning to understand the scriptures, the prophecies, and to lose the seals thereof. Yeah, because there was a time again, going back to the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. Okay, Daniel sealed the prophecies. He sealed the book. So nobody can can understand until the, the time is uh, fulfilled. And that time was fulfilled during the late 1960s under uh, uh, Slot, the 1960s. Under Abba Bivens. And that's another uh, history lesson for another for another day. But Abba Bivens, we believe through faith that that's Elisha or John the Baptist back in the reincarnation. And through that man, through the uh, uh, our elder Abba Bivens, uh, came out what? Came out fruit, which that fruit came out of New York, one west. And it started uh, spreading all throughout the whole world, all throughout the four winds of the earth, thanks to technology starting around the year 2007. So that book was actually open 
through the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai and given to his men. But the point being, back to Revelation 5 and 3, And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? Who's that speaking about? That's Yahweh Shai. The root of David has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. You see that? So Yahweh Shai has given his men the understanding of the scriptures. This is the book of Luke, chapter 4. And verse 16, and he came to Nazareth when he had been brought up, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You see that? So there's an example of Yahweh Shai opening the books. Okay, the seven uh, seals. Meaning he was able to give his man the understanding of prophecy. To the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. O bear him witness and wonder at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, it's not this Joseph's son. So the point is here. There's an example of Yahweh Shmuel Shai slowly but surely opening the seals of the Holy Scriptures. And through Yahweh Shai and his sacrifice in these last days, you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans are finally able to understand, okay, prophecy. So going back to Daniel, the 12th chapter and the 4th verse. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Yeah, and how do you run to and fro? Let's get an example of running to and fro. You have transportation at a physical level. Examples of transportation going to and fro is through what? A vehicle, you know, bus. You know, your, your car, you know, Uber, Lyft, airplane, helicopter. There's an example of going to and fro, but at a uh, technological level, going to and fro, that goes into what? Social media. Okay, social media, whether it be on Facebook Uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, group chats, you know, TikTok. There's an example of going to and fro. And the elect of the nation of Israel, so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, are running to and fro via, via technology, seeking what? Seeking the knowledge, seeking the, the truth. Daniel 12 and 4. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Yeah, and you have knowledge on the left and right hand side. On the left side, the knowledge of wickedness. Which goes into what? The doctrines of Esau, his false philosophies. Anything that's vanity and doesn't uh, profit you in the day of wrath. But on the right hand side, that knowledge... 
that shall be increased goes into this truth, the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that's going to benefit you in the day of wrath. And the way that knowledge is increasing is through what? Through the blue letter Bible. Now, let's get to the point. How to utilize the blue letter Bible. This is the book of 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh. Right? Not to man, but unto Yahweh. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So how do you divide the word of truth? Let's go into the book of John 5 and 39. Search the scriptures. For in them you think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. So in order for you to study, to study to show yourself the proof unto you how about Shmuel Shai, you have to search the scriptures. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 3. And it reads, Blessed is he, again, that he that's also symbolic to the she. Speaking about you sincere sisters as well, but first and foremost is the man. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy, and how do you hear the words of the prophecy? Through the men. Starting with the men at Great Millstone, pursuing to the prophecy of Jeremiah 3 and 15. Let's get that. It's the book of Jeremiah 3 and 15. And I will give you pastors, right? Prophets, shepherds, leaders, according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You see that? So the pastors the leaders, the true shepherds, those trees that produce, okay, incorruptible fruit are going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. So going back to Revelation 1 and 3, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Yeah, the time of Yahweh Shai's return is at hand. So before Yahweh Shai returns, you got to do what? Read, search the scriptures and study. This is Proverbs 15 and 28. The hearts of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. So a wicked spirit poureth out wicked things, poureth out false doctrine because he doesn't what? He doesn't study. He doesn't search the scriptures diligently. And a good example of men of the Lord during the time of the apostles who were righteous and studieth to answer is the book of Acts 17 and 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and, and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more, who's these? The men of the church of Berea. They were more noble than those in Thessalonica. And that they received the word, who's the word? Yeah, I will show you the gospel, prophecy. With all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So if you're a studious brother or a studious sister, a diligent brother or sister, you got to make sure to put in the effort to search the scriptures daily, whether the things that are being taught, whether it be by, you know, different camps, you know, whether it be, you know, in the midst of, uh, you know, different congregations, you got to search if it's true because anybody can say anything. But ultimately, through your faith, it's your job to search if the things that a man is teaching is true, you see that? And that's what makes you approved of Yahweh Bash Miao Shah. That's what gives you a, a, a righteous mindset, okay, according to the Heavenly Father. So, now uh, to get straight to my point, how to use the Blue Letter Bible. So, you have two options. You know, not sure if you brothers and sisters have a laptop. But this is mainly if you have a, a, a smartphone, whether it's Android or an iPhone. Okay. Now, there's a blue letter Bible. But 
what you can also do is download the Blue Letter Bible here in Apple. Just type in Blue Letter Bible. And there you go. It's this one right here. So I already downloaded the Blue Letter Bible. So you open it. And what you could do in the app, you have the basics. Just tap into the, the first verse. Go into, you know, you have cross references, audio, video. You know, you could highlight various scriptures. See that into, you know, blue color, you know, green color, you know, depending on your spirit, depending on how you study. Because a lot of every brother or sister studies the uh, the same way. You have audio. Okay, you have cross references, which are, you know, various uh, precepts. You could add notes to it for various different chapters. So these are just examples. Another example, example is when you click on, you know, you can click on the precept. And you can actually uh, remove the highlight. You know, you could copy, copy and paste that precept. You can actually share the verse with other uh, brothers or sisters. You cross reference. You have the uh, concordance. Okay, you could just uh, you know play around with it in the spirit. You know, so you can actually get the uh, the hang of it. Go into the Greek. Go into the English. Translations, got the search bar, you type in John 1-1. One one. Now that's one example, another example of how to use the Blue Letter Bible. And this is actually my favorite way to use it. I like to go into, not the app, but via the website. And this is how you use the Blue Letter Bible. I typed in Genesis 1 and 1 in the King James. Now, if you speak Spanish or English, you can actually go and translate that in the English version. RVR 60 stands for Reina Valera uh, 1960 translation. And there you go. There's the Spanish version. And on top, where it says Genesis 24. Job 38 and, and uh, John 1 and 1. These are examples of precepts or references that you can connect to get a better understanding of the scriptures. So let me go back now. You have the, uh, you have the NOT as well. But we mainly use the closest uh, translation to the Hebrew and the Greek. Now, to understand the Blue Letter Bible more, whenever you read the Old Testament, okay, we mainly use that to study the Hebrew. For example, Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, where it says God created the heaven and the earth. When you click on Genesis 1 and 1, you have something known as the uh, interlinear. And here you have the modern Hebrew. And whenever you see words like Strong's H7225, whenever you see that that first word H, that H is symbolic to Hebrew. And whenever you see a G next to it, that's actually symbolic to Greek. Okay, Strong's G, you see that? Now there's a G here for the so-called New Testament. G is symbolic to what? Greek. And the H is symbolic to Hebrew. So it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if you're, if you're not studious, you're going to think that that word God, in the book of Genesis 1 and 1, it's speaking about the Heavenly Father, and that's not true. That word God actually represents the modern Hebrew word Elohim, which translates to the ancient Palu Hebrew word Allah Hayam Yam. The Yam at, at the end of a, a of a word is plural. So when you click here, Strong's H four and thirty. 
Strong's H430, Entry 1, Eloach. Eloach. Yeah, that's the modern Hebrew. Second entry, Elohim. Elohim. Okay. Now, when the third that, entry, there's no, there's no E. Eloach. Okay, there's no E in the Hebrew. So it's Allah Hayam, which means Allah means power, and the Yam makes it plural, so that's powers. Another example of uh, the word powers actually means judges or angels, again, plural. For example, here you have the Strong's info, you have uh, different uh, synonyms. It says plural of what? Of gods. Plural of gods. And the context, right? Plural, rulers. Again, Allahayam, the Yam makes it plural, judges, the divine ones, the angels, the gods. Why? Because the angels, the gods, via the main angel, which is Yahweh Shah, were given the blueprint of what of creation. Yahweh is he is the architect. As when you have a when you go into a construction job, okay, before you start building, you know, your base, you gotta go through what? Through that blueprint. Okay, and who who drew or who sketched that blueprint? Yahweh. Let's get an example. Blueprint of a building. You see that? There's a blueprint. A map of a building. It ties the concept of design, right? And who's a designer of the design? Yahweh, right? To the details required to erect or to build a structure. Blueprints, otherwise known as architectural drawing sets, have been used since the 19th century and are a guide, right? So think upon the Blue Letter Bible, the Blue Letter Bible being a technological uh, tool as the Holy Scriptures. See that? As a guide, right? And who's that guide? The guide is Yahweh, Shemel, Shai, and the angels guiding us through the Blue Letter Bible as well, and the physical uh, Holy Scriptures through the construction process, right? And what are we uh, building? We're building the kingdom of heaven. Okay, there's a, there you go. There's a blueprint. And who drew the blueprint? Yahweh. Gave it to his, to his son, Yahweh Shai. And through Yahweh Shai, you had what? The angels who are currently building building the kingdom of heaven and the majority of those angels if you can receive it are the 144,000 mainly the 144,000 here the majority of them being in Babylon the Great so there's an example of a blueprint that the architect designed so the construction workers can execute okay if it's making sense, right? So now going back to the Blue Letter Bible. Let's go to Genesis 1 and 1. So now we got the understanding of the basics. You click here in Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God, which is Allah, right? Which means the judges the angels were pretty much the uh, construction workers now let's get john 1 and 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god right now this is referencing genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god that word god in the greek strong's chi twenty three sixteen. Strong's G 2316. Theos. 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 That's where you get the word uh, theater as well. It says a god or or goddess, a general name of deities. Okay. Plural. Or divinities. And on top of those divinities and deities, 
you actually have the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh. It says of magistrates and judges. What's a magistrate? Get to this right here. Magistrate. A civil officer or lay judge who administers the law. And who are those who minister the law in these last days? The hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, starting with the man at Great Millstone, to lay judge. This is the book of Judges. Six. Give me a second. Because the Heavenly Father has always sent judges here on earth. Deuteronomy 16 and 18. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. So even amongst the 12 tribes of Israel and the spirit in these last days, you, are, you have actual elders and apostles who are over those brothers and sisters in their uh, prospective tribe. Whether you're from the tribe of Judah, Levi, Issachar, Gad, Ephraim, Simeon, Reuben, so on and so forth. There's an actual judge in the spirit and officers who regulate or control okay, that certain tribe in the spirit. And they are doing what? They are judging the people with righteous judgment, right? With the judge, with the just, salak, judgment, okay? And there you go, okay? Just the uh, basics of how to utilize the blue letter Bible, okay? You know, you just type in the precept that you want to go to, okay? Matthew 1 and 1, you click here, go. And here you have the genealogy of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, you click in the book of Matthew and you have what? The interlinear. And you also have cross references, which are precepts for every word, like generation. You have examples of Isaiah 53, Romans 9 and 5, the son of David. Here are various precepts, Jeremiah 23 and 5, Luke 1 and 31, so on and so forth. Okay. You know, again, ultimately... Every brother and sister has a, a different way of studying the scriptures. And a good example to study the scriptures is through the blue letter Bible. Okay, with that, I pray this lesson was edifying. Give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Bashem, Rakak, with that, Shalom.